Hey, Max, how you doing? Okay. I'm sorry about holding you up like this. Now, listen, I know how important your meeting with Guy Navarre is this morning. In fact, if you can get Miracle Mud into his salon, that would be a major coup for Serenity Springs. Cora, there's more to life than mud, okay? If you want to go home and rest up, that's okay. No, I wish I could do that. The fact is, we're still looking for Vicky. Nobody knows where she is. I understand. Hey, listen, don't sweat this, all right? I can handle this. Besides, I'm a much better pitch man than you. Oh, good. Well, it's nice to know that my partner appreciates my limitations. <laughs> Every one of them. Come on, listen. Why don't you just take it easy, do what needs doing, and I'll handle this. This is seldom the bar's no brainer anyway. I mean, Miracle Mud is needs an outlet. The bar salons are a perfect place for us. Oh, I see. So then what you're really saying is that any idiot could pitch this deal. Unfortunately, yeah, that's what I just said. So listen, you go take care of your family, okay? This will be fine. Even Blair can't screw this deal up for us. Todd, I am running late. I am supposed to be at the country club meeting Delia any minute now. Said Briggs the copy for the special edition two hours ago. You mean our uh, piece on Vicky? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure you're going to hear from him soon. It was uh, a couple of hours ago? Yeah, at least. Well, you know, I thought since um, you didn't come up to bed that you were still working on it. No. I, I couldn't sleep. Besides, I uh, wanted to give you your space. I, like you said, you need time. Victoria Carpenter. Her brother's sorrow. Son's editor-in-chief, heartbroken over sister's breakdown. <laughs> this is perfect, Todd. That's great. You know, you really... A very good writer. Oh, well. At least I inherited something from the old man. <laughs> Besides $27 million. Mm. I'm going to call Briggs, tell him to get that edition out. Okay. You know, maybe because you've never had any family that you really cared about, you just don't know how to behave in one. But you're about so close to stepping out of line. All right, now, you just hold on a second, Junior. I don't have anything to say to you, and I don't give a damn what you have to say to me. Now, look, I brought those CD-ROMs that Vicky gave me back to the banner. And don't try to pin anything on me. It's not about the damn files. I'm talking about the story you're planning to write. About my mother. Yes, I got some sleep, a couple hours anyway, right there on the sofa. Clint, I, I know how it feels to walk away from a plane crash. Well, the plane didn't actually crash, honey. I'm trying to sympathize with my son, Alex. Do you mind? And the plane crash thing was, uh, you know, uh, what a you metaphor, call it. A metaphor, Pa. Wait a minute, where are you going? Uh, I want to check on Joey and Jessica before I go back out there. Oh, those poor kids. I, I wonder how Jessie's feeling now that she knows... Her mother's, you know. All those split personalities in the same body of a mother's. I mean, it is awful. Paul, let's not make it any harder on Jessica than it already is. Of course he's right, darling. Well, how could it be any harder, Clint? Knowing your mother's a couple of sandwiches shy of a picnic. I'm going to tell you something, son. I always did hey, think Vicky... Pa, I don't want to hear what you always thought of Vicky. You have no idea what she is going through right now. That's right, Clint. I don't. But if I wake up some morning and find out I'm somebody else, I head for a shrink quicker than he can say, Nikki Smith. Oh, now, please, just settle down, both of you. The last thing these kids need is to wake up to a domestic crisis. Besides, there's really nothing to worry about. I know exactly how to find Vicky.
No, you can tell your daddy, but the print's in his paper if you want. But don't come here trying to push the sun around. All I care about is that you don't print something that's going to hurt my mother. You know, I learned a long time ago the hard way that a person can't control what other people think or say or print about him or her, even if it is your mother. Don't you have a meeting to go to? Well, it can wait. Don't worry about this. Go to your meeting. You sure? I came here to talk to you as her brother, as one, as one journalist to another. To I'm asking a story about Todd, you. the banner has always printed the truth. No matter how uncomfortable it was for my family, I wouldn't ask you to do anything else. Well, then what are you doing here? Coming in here spitting nails first thing in the morning? Look, my father and I both feel that the police's search for my mother is news. We plan on reporting it. In, in fact, we think it'll probably help them locate her faster. So what do you want from me? A pat on the back? Or are you here to read me your press release? I want an assurance from you that the son will not sensationalize the story by including a lot of stuff. Well, like the allegations that my mother is the one responsible for starting the fires at Landfair and at the Banner. <laughs> allegations. Wake up, nephew. They're the truth. All I have to do is call my old boss, the chief domestic officer of the Federal Anti-Crime Bureau. He could find her just like that. Woman, well, wait a minute. Have you lost your senses? You bring in the feds and something like this, every two-bit newspaper in America will pick it up on the wire service. And every tabloid hound from here to Timbuktu will be camped out on our doorstep. How would that sit with little Jessica, huh? Uh, fine. I was just trying to help. I know that, honey, and uh, I, I, believe me, we do appreciate it, but uh, times like this, the family must pull together. The few outsiders, the better. Forget the feds. Great. I'm going to go check on Jessica. Thank you. Glenn, I know I've been very hard on Vicki uh, for what she did to you, throwing you over after 15 years of marriage. For what? For some spit-shine general who never in his life ever had dirt under his fingernails? Pa, this is not helping. I know, I know, I'm sorry. I guess what I'm trying to say is... I feel for you, son. Kids and what's... what's going on. To tell you the truth, I... I feel for Vicky. I... I really can't imagine the hell she's going through. I... I wouldn't wish that on anybody. But we... are gonna find Vicky. Bo and Cord are feeding the bushes, looking for leads. And when they find her, we're going to get the best specialist there is and make her whole again, give her back a life, her real life, being a mother to the little gal upstairs. I sure hope so. But if it isn't soon... Clint, it hasn't even been 12 hours yet. It can be too late. Trust me on this, Pa. Every minute that we don't find Vicky is another minute closer to disaster. You're being a little extreme, don't you think? She's got a gun. A gun? And in the state of mind she's in now, I don't know. She could hurt people, Pa. She could hurt herself. One Life to Live, brought to you by 
Gillette Sensor for Women, the razor worth holding on to. So if this guy shows up... A kind of arm? Gee. Excuse me. Well, listen, he's supposed to be here. I'm going to go call his hotel room, see if he's been held up. Uh, if he shows up in the meantime, you tell him I'll be right back. Got it. The color formats for the gym and the spa logo as soon as you can get them to uh -huh. have a seat. Uh, what do you have in mind? Well, I've got the notes for that right here. And regarding the fall line for the lipstick, here are the sketches for that, okay? Now, let's get back to the logo. This is what I want. Something graceful and flowing, but controlled, all right? Uh -huh. Nothing sprawling and organic. Oh, he likes serenity sprints. Absolutely. Nothing like Serenity Springs. I want you to think clean lines, but full, full of beautiful color. Isn't that Kinovar? You know what? I have been killing myself to get an appointment with that man. The secretary is like some electric fence. But you know what I heard? That Max Holden got through. You know what? I bet you it was some macho thing trying to sell his mud. Well, Mr. Navarre's secretary's not here now. You know, if he would sell our product, our new skin line product in his salon, Melador would be on its way a lot sooner, becoming a household name. But we're not even on the map yet. Why would he even consider us? I think I may have a very good reason. I got an eyewitness. Two of them. I saw the arson accelerants at the banner, and I know that your mother, the little match girl, put them there. Well, now that's quite a leap. Okay, so she was there. And they were there. And so that means that she must have planted them? I'm not leaping anywhere. I mean, she told me herself she burned down landfill. She what? Sorry. I thought you knew. You're making this up. You are making all this crap up. Now, what makes you think I'd believe you? You know, I'm the other half now. You guys aren't the only game in town. So if any of you Buchanans or any of your kin slip up, even if the banner buries the story, it's still going to be front page news for the sun. Now, that's what's got your shorts in a bind, isn't it? You got one shallow view of life, you know that? Yeah, well, shallow maybe, but the water's good. And you guys, you're left high and dry. So you're just going to have to get used to public scandal, just like I had to all those months when you put my face on the front page of the banner. You are a rapist and an escaped convict, and God knows what else. Your mother's psycho. Are you serious? There is a difference, Todd, between raping women and inciting two guys to do the same and being psychologically... Psychologically challenged. It's a new one. I like it. We all have our problems. My old man, your grandpa, and the guy who planted this demon seed. He pawned me off to some psychotic bully. Oh, well, ain't that sad. Nobody cut me any slack. Certainly not anybody in your family. Even after I paid my debt to society, worked everything out with Marty, I became respectable. Not one of you Buchanans gave me a freaking break. So tell me. Why the hell should I give you one now? A oh, sweetheart. He always still asleep. Well, I was just as well. He was up half the night. Uh, sweetheart, about your mother. Alex told me. You still can't find her? Thanks, Alex. Now, honey, I know you were hoping to wake up and hear some news about your mom. I just wanted to sleep. I didn't have the heart for hoping. Sorry, that probably sounds so awful. No. Honey, we will find your mother. Oh, but what if she's staying away because she thinks we're all mad at her? I mean, maybe she doesn't understand that we all know it was a different personality who no, did all those no. bad things. I'm sure that is not what's keeping her away from us. What is it then? I mean, maybe she... Maybe I said something that made her just go away and she... Honey, I promise you, you're not the cause. You're not the cause of what's happening to your mother. 
What is then? It happened... It happened back a long, long way, long before you were born, long even before the, before she met me. How come we never knew? <sighs> Honey, I don't want you to... I don't want you to think about this right now. But I promise you, we are... We're going to have your mother back with us, and she's going to be good as new before you know it. And we're all going to do everything we can to make her even better. I'll get it. I got it, Paul. Hello? Hey, Clint, it's me. Ah, uh, yeah, Paul, did Cord find you? Yeah, yeah, he's with me right now. Oh, where are you? We found Vicky's car. Her car? Is everything, uh... Well, there's no sign of any damage or anything, so she wasn't in an accident, but... But what? Vicky's nowhere to be found. Hey! Oh, you gave me a start there. How far to Landview? Well, oh, 50 miles, give or take. I can't walk that! No, not if you're in a hurry. <laughs> no, I gotta have a car! A car! I gotta have a, a car! Thank you. I know that you only stock well-established products. And I know the name Guy Navarre means top-of-the-line quality. But that does not mean I have no interest in new articles. Good. Because I can assure you that your clients will respond to Melador, and I can guarantee you very low prices if you buy in bulk to stock your salon. Of course, any markup is your discretion. Oh, that's a most inviting offer. Unfortunately, I already have a meeting scheduled. Well, before you go, I'd like for you to try one of our new samples. This is Aquaderm. It is a water-based remoisturizer. Water-based? Mm-hmm. We found that petroleum-based are too heavy for the skin, and women tend to uh, remove it before it has a chance to penetrate and to do its job. Whereas with a water-based product, they tend to reapply it. Mm-hmm. Most forward-thinking of you. Will you give me a chance? At what? At making you the best offer of your career. I would be a fool to say no to a woman as eager and direct and beautiful as yourself. You are a marvelous advertisement for your company. <laughs> Am I being too forward? I don't believe a woman can be too forward. Go on, let me hear your offer. Right. We've been talking about your salons and my new Melador products. We? Melador is opening its own spa right here in Landview. The first of a chain. If all goes well, we will go across country and then hopefully international. But here's the deal. If you will take on our products now in all of your salons, I will offer you first refusal in installing your salons in all of Melador's spas. That is quite an offer to make to a man you have just met. Because I know who you are. And you said I couldn't be too forward. I assure you, Guy, that my word is good and my business is sound. I'm on top of being having this eager and direct approach in my guidance. My company also has financial backing from my husband, Todd Manning, who is, although it may be just a little gauche to say, he's a multimillionaire. I will have my lawyers examine your business, and I will get back to you. After you see what your other meeting has to offer. <laughs> 
You are magnificent. <laughs> no. In deference to you, my dear, I will postpone my other meeting until you and I have come to terms. Or not. Or not, although personally that would be sad. Indeed. Fate was most kind today to place you between me and my plans. No matter the outcome, I will be grateful to her forever. Au revoir. Au revoir. Thank you. I was just Ooh. calling your office. Listen, it is a gorgeous day outside. Why don't we grab a table on the terrace? Uh, Max, I'm very sorry, but I wonder, could we postpone our meeting today? Uh, I, I am interested in Serenity Springs' miracle mud, but I must ask for a delay. Oh, uh, okay, sure, but why? I have had an offer from a company who can provide Navas salons with a far more extensive line of products. Well, surely, Max, you understand I would be foolish not to investigate this offer. Uh, well, I, I can't say I yeah. like... I will be in touch. No? doing here trying to appeal to your sense of right and wrong you don't care what you print in that rag just so long as you can move newspapers off the stand hey, that rag that I published is the same kind of paper your grandpa put out when he started in this business so you just save your attitude junior you know what I don't get you because you brag about him and then you turn around and talk about how much you hate him what a heartless creep he is would you get over it he is your father. And whether you like it or not, you are a lord. You're my mother's brother. Well, I'll be sure to remember you at Christmas time. You know, she could have made things real tough on you, Todd. She didn't. She never tried to disprove your parentage. She never thought about the trust fund that Victor left for you. She never attacked you. Not publicly, not privately. She didn't have to. Don't you think you owe her something? She's out there, Todd. And she's in trouble. Now, you go and sensationalize this story, and she sees it, or some media groupie recognizes her. God knows what could happen. Will you forget about me? Forget about Victor? Can't you just... Can't you just do this for Vicky? Car! A car! I gotta... How, how come you don't get it? A car! I gotta have a car! Oh, we don't rent cars here. Y yeah, but I got—I got to get to Landview. I got to have a—you got to get me a car. Just, just take it easy now. I'll—I'll I'll, I'll call uh, Wheels to Go and see if they got something available. For yeah, you. that's good. Good. I got to have a car. It's me, Skip. I think I'm going to need some help down here. I don't know how you found out about the bar, but it's obvious you did and intercepted him before our meeting. Oh, Max, I'm glad that you think that I'm so powerful. But I was just here having a business breakfast with my associate and well we ran into gee first names already huh mm -hmm. you've learned to move even faster blair slept with him yet that was a cheap shot even for you no shot is too cheap for you blair doesn't matter to you what you steal husbands business deals it's all the same sport to you huh so what'd you do hmm 
sell yourself to Guy the same way you did to Todd? Promising something you could never deliver? I didn't have to lie to make a deal, Max. Hmm. I just made Guy an offer, a better offer than anything that you could even propose to him. Oh, he fell for that. He's a good businessman, and he knows a fine deal when it's offered to him. Oh, I'll bet. What just happened here? I don't owe Vicky anything. She isn't so honorable, you know. She tried to frame me for all the damage she did at the Banner and at Landfair. Oh, and where did you get that? Oh, come on, well, why else would she give me all of the databases for the Banner, huh? But maybe it wasn't Vicky who did that. Maybe it was some kind of computer nerd personality that gave me the digitally encoded gold mine. So you know. Oh, yeah, no, I know. I did my research. I know all about Nikki Smith. Pretty cool, isn't it? Vicky turns into Nikki. Nikki bumps some guy off, and then Vicky just walks free. That's old news. And it sure won't sell any newspapers around here. Oh, well, no, I don't know. I think that the Sun readers have a certain interest in lapses at the banner. Especially if it's the publisher handing over the entire data banks to its competition. You know, I came to appeal to you, Miss Family. Now, is that stupid or what? I mean, what do you know about decency? About family loyalty? Are you kidding? Family means a great deal to me. So much so, in fact, that I put it in writing. I think it's really very touching. Garbage. You think so? Well, maybe you can give me some advice on how to polish it up. In fact, I'm having a little bit of trouble with the headline that's going to go with the accompanying story. Now, I'm thinking two photos of Vicky. One, the kind of publisher matriarch, and the other, the kind of picture that I would usually edit out, you know, with the, the eyes half closed because she was blinking, or maybe the flash caught her. So she looks really kind of dangerous. And then, in big black print, publisher, question mark, and then in red print, or pyromania, question mark. You know, you are still the same dumb football player you were at LU. Only now you're playing with the newspaper. Yeah. Yeah, well, I thought it was a little bit much, too. So what do you think about this? Publisher to paper. Burn, banner, burn. You make me sick. You make my whole family sick. No, not Vicky. Vicky was sick a long time before I turned up. It's me, Manning. Get the paper out. No. The way that I wrote it. Don't argue with me. Just get it out on the stands. Now. How long is it going to take Clint to get where they found Vicky's car? It wasn't in Wichita, for crying out loud. Take it easy, Lisa. I hope she's not hurt or anything. Oh, remember? Your Uncle Bo said that the car wasn't damaged at all. Yeah, but she could have hit her head, and she could be in some hospital, and nobody knows who she is. Sweetheart, you listen to me. Now, your Uncle Bo and Clint are going to search through every single hospital there is, and they are going to find Vicky, and they're going to make sure that she's okay. Hello? Who's calling? Kelly? Just a minute, please. I think she wants to make sure you're okay. Thanks, so. Kelly? It's Seth. I cannot no, stand yeah. seeing her suffering through something so terrible like this. Yeah, I'm just trying not to think about it. It just breaks my heart, Alex. Honey, I'm so hey, glad that we made up and got back Kelly. together so that we could no. be here to support the family. You know, maybe 
Maybe the boys have uh, found her mother. I know. Hey, you, you said you were going to get me a car. Where is it? Well, you'll be here any minute now. I can't wait. I, I got to get to Landview. No, no, stay, sit down for a minute. You'll be here any minute now. Uh, uh, nice work, Sheriff. No! 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 She forced Serenity Springs out of Logan's. She's putting up a competing spa and gym, and now she moves in on Navarre and his chain of salons two seconds before I close the deal. Oh, wait, how do you know that? Maybe she really did make a better offer. We didn't even get a word in. I don't know. Why would you even think this woman made an honest offer? She would lie about what she ate for breakfast if it gave her a better angle. First of all, you need to calm down. As far as Blair is concerned, lately, all she cares about, all she thinks about is business. What is the matter with you? Her business is destroying me, my family, my home, and our company. Max. It is come. time to take off the gloves, Cord. Blair does not care about Serenity Springs. The only thing she's thinking about right now is Melador. And what's best for Melador is decimating Serenity Springs. If Serenity Springs sinks or swims, it will do it on its own merit. The last thing you need to do right now is get dragged down in the mud to win a fight with Blair. We just lost the fight and we didn't even get in the ring. What I'm trying to say is that the next fight, we will win. And it will be clean, fair, and square. And that will make the victory that much better. All right? I hate to leave you here like this, but we're still looking for Vicky. I gotta get back out there. Go on, it's, it's, it's all right. Go ahead. Relax, huh? Clean, fair, and square. It's a recipe for certain failure if I ever heard one. I won't let Blair win another one. When I came up with the idea of putting Guy Navarre salons at all of our Melador spas, well, it was perfect. It was just, it just made perfect sense. What? Nothing. It's nice to see you enjoying your work. Yeah. So, what about you and your work? How did it go with Kevin? You know, I... I wonder what Vicky would be like if she hadn't married a Buchanan. I mean, what would she... And her kids be like that. What are they like now? Like little kings. You know, they think that they can dictate what is and isn't news. You know, for all of their talk about family, I think I'm the only one that inherited any of Big Vic's savvy. Well, more power to you. To the rising sun. You know, that lot of promotions drawing a lot of readers to the sun. Especially in East Landview, where we tend to have more readers per issue that we sell. So the advertising dollars are jacked way up. That's great. And now when this paper hits the stands with my sister, Psycho, it's going to sell out. I mean, what could be bigger news around here than Victoria Carpenter, Buchanan, whatever she is, and her Pandora's box of personalities? I can't think of a thing. <laughs> I'm sure that there's more good stuff in Vicky's past. I get the feeling there's a whole lot more to this story than we know right now. We've checked every inch of this car, Clint. Uh, she's long gone. She's walked or hitchhiked. Well, she hasn't been seen by any local doctors or hospitals, so you can uh, rest easy on that count. Okay, so what are we still doing standing around here? I want to check every twig in this wooded area before we push into the countryside. Now, most likely, we're going to find something right here. Ah, uh, there's no time. Oh. Hell, we don't know where she is. We don't even know who she is. What trouble she might be in. I mean, Tori and Tommy, those two alter personalities are capable of anything. Especially with a loaded gun. All right, all right. Just take it easy. We're dancing as fast as we can. I know, right I know, I know. I just can't stand to see Vicky break into pieces like this. All because of what her father did. 
Through Victor? What's he have to do with this? It was again and again and again. He planned it. He arranged it. He made a ritual out of it. He made a ritual out of raping his daughter. Clint? He was like a god to her, Bo. Well, everybody in Landview. I mean, the man built the banner. He was honored, he was admired, he was revered even. But he was a... A what? What are you trying to say? Nothing. Let's just find Vicky. <laughs> No. Oh, she's a strong no. one, Billy. Can you help me? No. No. Can you no. tell me your name, please? No. Where are you from? No. No. Said she needed a car. Said she had to get the land. No. Well, seeing as how she's disoriented and everything, I'm going to have to check her pockets for some identification. No. Billy, I want you to, I want you to check her pockets. We shut her this down. This is a woman. Yeah. Just do it. Check her ankles and uh, waist bands. <laughs> About your deal. It's not a deal yet. Well, yeah, anyway, I, I heard with Melador. You will understand if I don't wish to confirm that. Well, I just want you to know that there's no hard feelings. Claire and I go way back. Hmm. Yeah, this on me, okay? No, really, I, I'm very happy for her. I mean, I think it's just great she's getting a chance again after all that bad luck she had. Bad luck? Oh, yeah, the, uh, there's some allergic reactions to some of her skin products. She must have taken allergies. I will have my people check their lab reports right away. Well, you don't have to bother with that. I can I can show you some hard proof. Be ready to increase production on the skincare line. <laughs> yes, and have them ready to ship. Every Navarre salon in the state. All right? I'll let you know when. Thanks. What set Vicky off, do you think? I mean, these personalities, they've been dormant for quite a while now, so what's the crisis all of a sudden? I'm not sure. But I intend to find out. Commissioner. Yeah. We're done with the woods. No sign of Mrs. Carpenter. Okay, extend the uh, search in all directions. If you need more personnel, just call for backup. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm arresting you for weapons violations and disorderly conduct and we can hold off on the resisting arrest for the moment if you want your stand. Tomorrow, it's a half century of huge laughs. Join Debbie Allen, Annie Potts, Paula Poundstone, and John Ritter when they host 50 Years of Funny Females. This is Mark Curry from Hang On Mr. Cooper getting ready for the big picnic on GH. Oh, I love picnics. Well, in this picnic, Sonny arrives and finds Brenda and Miguel doing more than tossing the salad. Ooh, now this is something to talk about. <laughs>